Now, I don't often get a chance to talk about on this channel, mostly because I get in a loop of talking about stuff that people in the comments ask me to talk about, but I decided it was about time to get back to talking about some of the stuff that's important to me. Enter the game that has been dominating every spare moment of my life since January. Persona 4 Golden, aka the reason to buy a PlayStation Vita. And if you don't believe me that a single game is worth dropping over $100 to buy the machine, $30 to get a storage card so you can buy it online, or $40 plus to find a physical copy, then sit back and let me lay down the law for you. Here we go. Here we go. So the Persona series is developed by Atlas and is a spin-off but kind of now just a standalone series of one of Atlas's main game franchises. Over the past few years, Persona has grown into a pillar of the company's lineup, mostly thanks to the massive success of Persona 5, not just in Japan but also in English speaking countries as well. I discovered it around this time and feverishly played through Persona 5 and absolutely loved it. I'm also super excited about the chances of getting to talk about this game and this series more with the release of Scramble and Royale on the horizon. But well before either of those were announced, I had finally finished Persona 5 after literally hundreds of hours of playing it. It was the most time I'd ever put into a game before and I was craving more. But getting your hands on the past games in the series is becoming much more difficult than it used to be. It's next to impossible to get the original version of Persona 4 in my region for PlayStation 2. So I did the next best thing, and yeah, I emulated it. Piracy is murder. Yeah, it wasn't the best thing to do, I know, but at some point, all right, a baby's gotta do what a baby's gotta do. Also, speaking of piracy, I've got no idea how to even record a PS Vita's gameplay, so all the gameplay you are seeing from in this video is from YouTube, links to the original channels in the description below. Also, if there's some background noise, it's because it's raining at the moment, which is oddly fits with the game I'm talking about. Anyway, let's jump into it. I played through it and watched through the anime at the same time. After that, I played through Persona 3, which surprisingly was available to buy on the PlayStation 3 store, which meant I could actually, you know, buy it, which I was a bit happier about. I uh, never ended up finishing 3 because it didn't really do it for me. I didn't enjoy the different pacing style. I typically prefer slower paced games, but its less refined gameplay loop didn't hook me as much, and while I liked elements, I never connected with the characters or setting. Even on a music level, I didn't enjoy it too much, which was a first for me. I know people will be a bit mad about that considering so many people like Persona 3, but it just wasn't for me. And then that was basically it for me. I called it there because I knew I wasn't ready to jump into the massive games that 1, 2, and 2 Part 2 would be, so I left them alone for the time being. A few years went past and we got the announcement for Royale and all that, and my interest of the series peaked again, and I wanted to start playing them again. I left 5 alone because I knew Royale would be the, the better way of replaying it, so I moved on to 4, but I didn't want to play it illegally again. I wanted to support Atlas the best way I could, which meant buying it the next best way. After a few weeks of ooing and ahhing, I finally made the plunge and saying, if it isn't as good as I remember it being, I can at least try some other stuff out with the Vita. I bought it and thus began the month-long, incredibly annoying prep time for playing the game. Sony made it damn well sure that buying a Vita would be the most annoying thing in the world. I had it sitting on my desk, completely useless, for over a month as I waited for a storage card to arrive. The first guy I bought it from didn't tell me he was going away for three weeks, so I ended up buying him a second time from someone else, and they were so expensive for such a tiny amount of storage. I can't believe Sony made such a stupid decision as to not include some form of built-in storage with the 1000 model, but at long last, I had it. It was all going, and I jumped into Persona 4 for the second time. Collectively, I spent $170 to be able to play Persona 4 Golden, and it honestly was worth every cent and every annoying day dealing with eBay sellers. Let me explain why. So you start Persona 4 Golden arriving in the small country town of Inaba to stay with your uncle for a year. You quickly experience school life, and as you are walking home with Chie and Yukiko, as they barrage you with questions about city life, you run into the first major plot point, a crime scene where a woman has been found hanging from a TV antenna, dead from unknown causes. Welcome to the first hour of Persona 4. The mystery has now begun. Persona follows along as you and your quickly growing circle of friends investigate the outbreak of murders and kidnappings that have suddenly swept across the small town. 
all being tied in some fashion to the Midnight Channel, a bizarre show that appears on rainy nights on a switched off TV which shows the next victim of the killer. Sorry to interrupt this video, this is just the cringiest part I've ever seen and we're just gonna have to stop it. I'm sorry, it's over. You got nothing else, alright? I refuse to watch this. I refuse to watch this. I don't want it. Go away! Shush! Things begin to take an even more supernatural turn as you and your friends discover you can enter a different world by climbing into the TVs. Into a world populated by shadows, a world intrinsically connected with ours, and the people in our world. In this world you battle these shadows to save the killer's kidnapped victims before their own shadows, creatures born out of the person's hidden and stamped out emotions and beliefs that they can't accept before they kill the victim. This is the game's bread and butter, but what it does better than so many other RPGs is that it doesn't just rely on this to get you through the game's 80 plus hour campaign. It does so much more than just that. Now whenever I talk about Persona on this channel, I do see a lot of people shrug the series off thinking that it simply isn't for them, without really trying it or that they say the JRPG genre is just too much of a departure for them personally from what they normally play. But I absolutely assure you, I was the exact same a few years ago. Persona 5 was the first ever experience with this genre I ever had, outside of like playing a Pokemon game once before. Now I wouldn't re recommend this to be someone's first foray into the genre. I recommend 5 more as its first 20 hours is more or less a well paced tutorial to get new people into the series. Each game is also uh, completely separate with its own story, you don't need to play any of the previous ones. 4 kind of drops you in a bit quicker which might not be as good for a first timer. These games are by no means difficult to get into, they're some of the most newcomer friendly games in the entire genre. They're most similar to stuff like Pokemon than most other JRPGs, in their battle systems at least. They are complex games, but they start simple and build on those systems slowly. A bit of a warning though, I've played a lot of games. I've played horror games, I've played very mature games, I've played very gory games, very violent games. But, and this may sound weird, but this is one of the more mature games that I've ever played, which is kind of funny because on the surface it looks so bright and bubbly, but the game tackles some very interesting, dark, mature, and difficult topics. And the reason why I think it's one of the more mature games I've ever played is because it's more than willing to drop all the jokes or the bubbliness to deal with these situations. They don't skirt around things. While some stuff is left unsaid in the English release, the topics are still given great detail. The murders are what people always point to when talking about the more mature aspects of the game, but it really spends more time on these personal character situations and the stuff the main cast deals with. And they deal with it nearly always in a really interesting and mature way. Like a girl who's quit being an idol and now doesn't even know what her own personality is anymore because she's been creating one and using different ones for so long that she doesn't even trust the idea of people liking her for herself and not for her image. And it doesn't just deal with this type of stuff once. The main thing you'll be doing other than going through the dungeons and fighting shadows in standard turn-based combat is finding your different friends around the map and spending time with them. You can also eat at restaurants, garden, read and study. All of which help to raise your personal stats like your knowledge, which lets you do better at school, your courage and understanding, which lets you say more daring things when talking to people, and other stuff like that. All of which takes up your very limited time. But what you'll mostly be doing is spending time with your social links, or if you've played Persona 5, your confidants. Through these segments, either being short scenes or conversations, build on the smaller personal struggles each character is going through. Such as with Yosuke, who at first appears to be the typical best friend trope, his story delves into his personal struggle of moving to the country and dealing with the loss of someone important to him, but also his jealousy of the main character. With Chie, it's about her personal growth and the desire to protect people and be needed by them. With Yukiko, it's the struggle of deciding whether she will stay in Inaba and take on her family's inn or strike out on her own. There are so many small storylines that it's basically impossible to do all of them in a single playthrough. But these stories take these characters to a whole other level, a level that I believe surpasses the characters of Persona 5, because all the characters' personal growth is linked to the gameplay in a way that isn't in Persona 5. In P4, all of the main cast has a dungeon that you have to defeat. The dungeon is the amalgamation of their personal struggles and the battles within them between what they want and what they think they want. This allows for a much deeper dive into each character outside of Yosuke and Chie, who don't have dungeons but do have shadows. This is something that Persona 5 was never able to do because only the bad guys have dungeons in that game. It's a fundamental difference that is extremely interesting. And it is why in Persona 5, Futaba is one of the more fleshed out characters because she also has a dungeon while being a main character. 
What I'm basically trying to say is Persona 4 has some incredible characters, and its use of mature content makes them feel real. It is so much more than its bright exterior, and all the characters are proof of that. It's also a game that really gets the roleplay aspect right. You feel involved. You will sweat over some of the dialogue decisions you will make. My one complaint regarding all of that is that once you get the character to max social rank and either start dating them or have fulfilled the rank, they kind of just stop. Like, there isn't much to do with them. Like, come on, I'm dating Chie. Best girl in the game, uh, fight me. Why can't I talk to her? And when I do, she nearly always talks about the same stuff she did before. And there's a few, like, little events you can do with them, but it mostly just, like, stops. It's not a massive issue, it's just kind of annoying, but yeah, again, not too much of a problem as you nearly always have other social links to work on. When you don't have much to do in Indaba is when you and your friends jump into the TV to do some old school RPG combat. You fight different shadows, all of which have different designs, who have their own strengths and weaknesses. You usually spend the first few floors of a dungeon working out the new types of shadows and their weaknesses. After that, you can usually blitz through the next few floors, encountering bosses and whatnot. You gather together a party, all of whom have their own strengths and weaknesses, and then gather your own collection of personas to lead the fight or support your party by countering their weaknesses. For example, if one character is weak to ice, you can pursue a persona who can create a shield against ice attacks, so you can protect them if you run into an enemy that uses ice, or you can use a persona that uses fire to be able to attack that enemy and get rid of them quicker so you don't need to support that party member, but there's more risks involved with that. The game presents you with hundreds of choices like that in a single fight, and even after hundreds and hundreds of fights, you never get bored, because no matter how powerful you are, if you don't take the party's weaknesses into account, you can get drained of SP and healing items very quickly, which will shorten the amount of time you can keep going through the dungeon. The Persona games thrive on creating so many different systems that all appear so separate. Like, how does reading this book on a bully teacher make you get through dungeons quicker? Well, the book raises your understanding, which means you'll be able to spend more time with this character, which will raise their social link, which means they will be stronger and will be able to do more to support you in a fight, such as taking a mortal blow for you or something similar. The game gives you all these different ways to keep yourself entertained and you never feel like you've wasted time because they always support each other. Like answering questions right in class raises your knowledge, which means you'll do better at your exams, which means your classmates will respect you more, improving your social links. Everything comes full circle and it's incredible. Next we gotta talk about the game's presentation. Yeah, for some unfamiliar with the original release, this may not look like the best thing in the world, and on graphic side, it is lacking a little, but Persona has never been a series focused on the hottest, toppest looking textures and models. They've always lent more towards the stylistic designs over realism, and I reckon if this game came out this year, it'd only look moderately better, because it just seems like this is what Atlas wanted to make, and this is how they made it look. Like, the PS2 is more powerful than a lot of people give it credit, and they still chose for it to look like this, and I think Golden is a good update, while not losing the original game's artistic design. The audio is also pretty remarkable. The speakers and screen on the Vita 1000 model is the reason I wanted it over the 2000 model, which has some built-in memory. The screen is stunning, and the audio is perfect and crisp. The voices sound great, some of the voice acting is a little rough, some of Chie's lines specifically, but it gets better as you get used to the way she talks. And the music, oh my lord, the music is incredible. It's not as good as Persona 5's perfect mix of grunge, jazz, and metal, but it's still on a whole other level compared to most JRPGs. The way the tracks change between each other and how each location has its own tracks just makes it feel like you could play this game with your eyes closed and still know exactly what's going on. It's so good. I've even used some of it in projects like when I played Humans vs. Zombies on the main channel. This way? Yeah. There's another group of humans. So yeah, that's Persona 4 Golden. I believe this game is hands down the reason to buy a Vita. Simple as that. It's a masterpiece. Outside of tiny little issues, this game is astoundingly good. We live in a world where game companies are perfectly happy with releasing buggy, unfinished, glitchy, broken messes and expecting top dollar for them. Atlas has never fallen into that trap. Outside of releasing a dubious amount of spin-offs for each game, but when a game is this good to begin with, I think they've earned the right to make a profit off its success. I think it's good that we support the companies that stand against that tide and give us complete, full, almost perfectly crafted experiences time and time again. This is Atlas's shining jewel of a game. 
Persona 5 is amazing, and I adore it, and I'll talk to anyone I can find about that game. But Persona 4 isn't as flamboyant, it isn't as stylistic. It's much more quiet, much more subtle, much slower, and a much more confident experience, and I adore it. I spent $170 to play this game, and I'd do it again. And if you've played Persona 5 and enjoyed that, I'd recommend you do the same.